Hello, madcappers. Today, I'm so excited to share with you my pattern for making a fleece or winter bucket hat. Um, the band on this hat is straight up, just like our winter cloche, and it's actually the same band that I'm going to be using. The pattern piece today that's new is the piece for the brim. We're going to decorate our hat with a bow, easy to make, and here's your brim piece. You can get it free on our website. You don't have to leave any personal information. You can just download it and print it out at your own whim or will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the technique that I use when I make my visors. I'm going to trace my brim outline onto my extra firm sew in stabilizer and then I will sew it on the wrong side of the outside piece of my bucket hat brim. Now when I say outside piece I mean the piece that's on the top, the piece that's going to be sewn to the the right side of the rest of the hat and in this case it's this beautiful red and black checkered print that makes me feel so Canadian. It makes you probably feel Canadian too but it's a very trendy popular print and if you're going to do this hat for your business you need to use this material as well. We have sold heaps of them. So I've sewn all the way around the outline of my brim. And now I'm going to put the right sides together. I'm using black for underneath my brim. That gives me a little bit more shade around my face. And I do like using black fleece under my winter hat brims. So I will pin now those layers together. And that's how I am going to cut out my black piece. So I'm gonna follow my uh, line of sewing and just cut right up towards the edge, not into the sewing, but just on one side of the sewing. And then my pieces are gonna be all exactly the same size. And I'm using my Fisker's scissors that have a spring-loaded action so I don't have to use my wrist too hard to make those scissors work. If you don't have a pair, I got mine at Michael's but I do have a link for them below that you can get them on Amazon as well. And so I'm just going to cut on just on the outside edge of my sewing. And my brim pieces are still all pinned together through the all three layers. So the black, the black and red check, and the extra firm sew-in stabilizer. Now you can use a stabilizer that's not quite so heavy, but I really love the, the feel of a good strong brim in the winter and I like the way that this extra firm stabilizer works and I will put a link for that in the description below as well. It gives you a nice quality brim that keeps your face and your glasses dry. And I'm gonna sew around that outside edge with my regular seam width to sew all three pieces together. But I'm only gonna sew up to the point where those pins are and leave the two ends open a little bit before I sew them together on their back seams. And I'm using my handy dandy magnetic seam guide measure. And I'm using my regular seam width of 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter. And just a regular length stitch as well. And I'm going from one pin to the other. I'll do a little back and forth. And now I'm going to sew the right sides together of my black and red check, which is my outside top layer of my brim. And I'll use my regular seam width. I'll pin them together just to hold them. And I just check to make sure that the pattern is going to look all right. And I'm just going to sew across that back seam on the upper part of my brim. What's going to be the upper part of my brim. And I'll take my pin out. And now I'm going to just do the same with the black piece, the underside of the brim. 
And I love doing my brims this way. I do this with all of my brims and we're going to start a, a, a journey now into hats with full brims. We're going to do a summer sun hat for traveling that um, will have a full brim and we're going to do some different versions of this bucket hat. So just with my regular seam width, I'm going to sew the right sides together of the black. And now I'm going to finish that outer edge seam and just close that up. And I'll have a very nice flat back seam edge of my brim. It's gonna be comfortable and it's gonna look nice and there won't be any bulky seams. Now I'm gonna open up those two raw edges and I'll sew across them so that the seams are open on the top and the bottom. So on the top side and on that black fleece side. And I'll just check them to make sure that they're open before I sew across them. And by all means, if you have to pin those open, then do that. I sort of have the hang of it now after 36 years of making these hats. <laughs> but that's not to say that I would never ever make a hat without using pins. It's just not worth the hassle folks of ripping things out. If you have pins, use them. You'll be so glad you did. So you can clip that edge or you can serge it like I do and the serging just sort of helps to compress all of those three layers together and gives me a nice firm uh, under seam inside that I can use to roll the edge of the seam right out on the right side so that I have the same amount of fabric on either side of that seam and it sort of ends up right on the middle of the edge of my brim. And I'll just clip and pin all the way around before I do a top stitch. And take your time with this step, folks, because you really want to make a nice, clean, smooth edge that looks perfectly uh, in sync all the way around. And so rolling it out, just go around, work it, work the edge of that inside seam right to the edge of the outside. And then pin and clip and you'll be really pleased that you took a little bit of time to do this right. It's so worth it. And now we're ready to do our top stitch. And I do my top stitch about a, a half an inch or 13 millimeters away from the edge of my seam. And again, my handy magnetic seam guide comes to the rescue to make sure that I do a very neat, tidy job. No wonky stitches for this gal. Thanks to these tools. <laughs> I know a lot of experienced sewers though that would never ever use this. They would think that it takes too much time to move it back and forth, but I just at this point in my career, I just want things to be neat and the best work that I've ever done. So these things really do help me. And now I'm going to just close up that inside seam. Sew those three layers together and I'll put on my mad cap label as well right across the back edge and look at that I have a beautiful bucket brim looking for a beautiful bucket brim hat top section so now we're gonna make that next and we're gonna use the top that we've been using for our winter projects so if you've made a hat already with me, you already have this top shape, but it's on the website and I'll link it with the bucket hat as well. It would be our rolled toque or our toque, our winter toque top. And it has a dart. The dart helps to lift the top off of the top of your head and take some of the pressure off of the seam where the top joins the band of the hat. 
It gives it a bit of a three-dimensional shape, a curve that matches the three-dimensional shapes of the top of our heads. And there's our winter cloche band, but we're gonna use it for our winter bucket hat too. That's right, the more we can recycle these hat pieces into new hats, the better we are, right folks? And I have taped mine to a piece of Bristol board or construction paper, a, a heavy paper, so you can do that and then that makes it easier to use over and over again. And if you don't want this hat to be so deep, you can see in that little insert at the top, you can trim a centimeter off the bottom because this is a deep fit hat. It's meant to be worn in the winter, so this band comes down and uh, gives you some good ear coverage. And I also wanna just point out, you can tell the difference between the good side and the wrong side of fleece because the good side is brighter. In fact, with most fabrics, the right side of the fabric is the brighter side. So you could see that both in the red and black check and in the black in that case. And I'm just gonna put the right sides together. I've traced the outline of my band on the wrong side of my black and red check fabric or red and black check fabric. And I'm just cutting them out together. They'll be exactly the same size. And now I'm gonna add a little decor to our hat band with some of this beautiful stretch lace. It's just over um, two inches or just over five centimeters in width. And you can use it for a lot of things in your crafts. Um, people sometimes use it for lingerie, but I really enjoy using it to just make my hat bands a little bit more interesting. So I'll cut out a piece uh, that is, is the same width as my band. And I will link this elastic in the description as well. So I'm going to pin it on to the right side of my outside band or my, my good, my, my band that I'm using for the outside of my hat, my red and black check. And as I pin it, I'm just gonna move it along, just sort of slightly stretch it. And I find that it just makes it easier to sew it onto the band if I just sort of take that little bit of extra stretch out of the equation. And I like to pin in the same, um, in a horizontal direction with my pins so that I don't have to take the pins out because I'm going to sew it on the band in two places. And I'm going to work from the back of the band when I'm sewing the elastic on. So the elastic is gonna be up against the feed plate of my sewing machine. And I'm using my first stitch close to the edge, about um, six millimeters or a quarter inch from the edge. And there you can see I've sewn it on. And now I'm just gonna measure where I want that next seam to be up close to the other edge of the elastic inside of the band. And I'm looking at about an inch and three quarters or four and a half centimeters. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna sew from the back side. So it's important that I set my magnetic measure at the right uh, width so that I can just have the edge of my band following along the edge of the measure and I'll have a nice straight line because I'm working from the back of the band this magnetic seam measure really helps me here now you could follow that print though as well if you pick a print for your first project you could easily pick a line or draw a line on the back with a washable marker there are other ways to do this All right, so now my beautiful black stretch elastic lace is in place and I'll just trim off that extra bit on the end. And I'm going to mark a center point on my band at, on the top and the bottom for the center front. And now I can 
decorate this hat the way you saw Ileana wear it at the beginning of the video. It's very easy if you just take a piece of fleece. This one was about eight inches long um, and I'm going to make it just less than an inch wide or two centimeters wide and 20 centimeters or so long to start and I'm just going to sew it towards the the top of where the lace is sewn on to the band just off center I don't like things right in the middle of, of my hats any of my trim I like to just make them slightly off center and I'll just tie it in a knot and I've used this technique before on the channel to decorate a, a simple headband and you can see from Ileana's hat her knot is slightly askew or on a bit of an angle but you can just adjust your knot so that it goes straight across like this or on an angle and when you're happy with it just clip the ends and now you have your hat decorated and all finished once you have it all assembled but in this case I'm going to show you how to do a bow with a bow casing and so I've taken another piece of fleece and it's a little bit wider than the one that I used for that knot I'll put the measurements of my bow pieces in the description for you and I'm just gonna I've just set it down with the right side um, together on that um, on that elastic lace and I'm gonna just sew up to the point where I want that casing to come back folding on itself to make an opening to stick the bow into and so I'm just gonna turn the other piece down now and sew it into the bottom edge and now I have a, a little casing or a little channel that I can insert a bow into and now I'll finish making my hat. I'm just gonna do a bit of a stay stitch on the edge of the two band pieces where there isn't any sewing yet, just so that it helps it not stretch. And I'm just going to match up my lace and my pattern from my fleece, pin the back seams, and I'm gonna sew with my regular seam width the back seam of my lining or my black piece. And I'm going to sew the dart on my top piece, starting up in the center and working down to the edge. Again, my regular seam width. And then I'm going to top stitch all of those seams flat. So with the top, I go from the bottom up one side of the dart, pivot at the top with the needle in the fabric, turn and come down the other side of the seam or the dart. And now I'm going to sew the back seams of my two band pieces flat as well. So the outside band piece go up one side of the seam and come back down the other, sewing that raw edge on the inside down flat, which makes a much more comfortable hat than having a bulky seam. And now I do it on the black piece, which is my lining piece. And I'll just go around now the black piece on both edges and do that stay stitch just to help prevent any stretching out of shape. And now I am ready to put it all together. I just do a notch in the center of my brim. And with the right sides together, I'm gonna match back seams and center front notches. And then I'll just work it in on the sides there just making sure that everything is going to fit give it a clip or a pin and now right sides together i'm going to sew the outside band to the outside brim piece and i use my regular seam width and now i'm going to pin my black lining piece right sides together with the black underside of my brim it's easy when you're using different colors for your lining folks and your under brim because you can just match those colors together when you get to this point and the same thing I'm just working it in making sure that the pieces are all gonna fit and now I'm gonna sew them all together through all the layers and I'm gonna work on the same side that I just sewed in the previous step and I'm just sort of following along that same 
a line of sewing that I made when I sewed the first piece of the band, the outside piece band, onto the outside of our brim. And take your time with this step, folks. Make sure you're not getting any uh, wrinkles or puckers, sewing into the seam a little bit more than you want to, and then just close off the top, sew those two raw edges together, and now we're ready to put the top on. Put a top on that. So again, we're gonna match the back seam, the dart, with the back seam of the hat, the center front of the top with the center front of the band, and using our regular seam width carefully, we're gonna work in that top all the way around so that the fit is perfect. And we're gonna finish off our hat sewing with a top stitch. And I like to do that just to take some of the pressure off of the top and I'll do a stitch. And I'm gonna work from the outside of the hat. I'm looking down at the outside layers and my seam that joins the top and the band together is on the left side of my presser foot. And I'm just using that left side of my presser foot as a guide to do a, a, a consistent top stitch all the way around. And you can serge that edge like I have, or you can just trim it with your scissors on the inside. Nobody's gonna see it, but I like the serging. And now we're gonna make our bow. I have a video about how, to, how I make bows. It's pretty easy. You just sew a line down the center of the bow, leave ends on each end, and you're just gonna wrap those ends in opposite directions and gather it with your fingers. And then just hold that gather with these ends of thread tie them off in a double, triple knot. And I'll put my bow measurements in the description as well. I'm just gonna trim those thread ends. And you can use a bodkin or your fingers to open up that little casing that we made, that channel, and pull the bow through, starting at one end, bringing it the center of the bow into the casing and just tidy it up and make sure that you're happy with it. If you think the bow is too big, you can trim it down at this point. If you want to finish it off by gluing from the back, you can do that. Um, or you can sew from the back with a needle and thread. The bow pretty much stays in friction wise though. So, you know, it's up to you to decide whether you want to fasten it more securely. But it fits my hat block and this is our regular uh, hat size folks and that's what the pattern piece on the website is but we will have a fully graded pattern in three adult head sizes and these are different ways that I have made this hat so you can make a little belt trim you can do a bigger bow and put a piece of, of uh, contrasting fleece or you can make a flower pin and use a smaller piece of lace so many ways to finish this off and I hope that I've inspired you and you've got some great ideas running through your head. Instead of a bow, you could make a nice little fleece flower pin and we've made that before on our channel. I'll put a link to that uh, video in the description below as well. Either way, you're gonna love this hat and hey, make a pair of matching fingerless gloves to go with it and you have a set a great gift for you or for somebody that you love or for your sewing business. Lots of choices here. So I'm going to put my bow back in using my handy dandy bodkin. And I have to tell you that here today in Canada, it's snowing outside. So that means I think it's time for me to try this on. Yes, it is. Oh, and you can turn up the back if you have a coat with a collar so that your hat doesn't move. But see, I've pulled this down. It has a nice deep fit, a nice brim that covers my glasses. And that's it, folks. I'm done for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comments and questions, leave them below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. We'd love to have you with us on this journey for the next batch of hats. Happy sewing everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.